Savannah Riverkeeper. Yep. And she's going to talk to us about another and even larger habitat restoration project that grew out of all the machinations with Savannah Harbor. Tanya Bonitatibus, I'm your Savannah Riverkeeper. Uh, this is my baby. This is the one thing I want to do before I retire, and it is built on the backs of many people that sit in this room. Um, and it is actually, we've been calling ourselves for years, uh, folks that have been, I call them the super secret team. So there's been a group of us, South Carolina, Georgia, federal agencies down to locals that have met to kind of think through how do we put this river back together? So between Augusta and Savannah, starting actually in the early, you know, really starting in the 1700s, but by the Corps of Engineers in the 30s up through the 70s, was a pretty strategic project to straighten the river. Um, there are 38 cuts. I learned today, I thought it was about 45 miles. I think it's actually maybe 78 miles. Um, so it's a, right now between Augusta and Savannah, it's 200 miles. We're missing 78 additional miles between Augusta and Savannah. Um, one of the big pieces that, that we talk about a lot is we want our kidney and our liver system back. Um, many people don't realize this, but these creek systems and these huge swamp, uh, the swamp areas actually have quite a bit of different connectivity to the river. So the river water is actually going back into these creeks flowing <coughs> through the swamp and then coming back out again. So when you disconnect these cutoffs, you're actually disconnecting huge components of swamp on either side of the river, which I would argue is your liver and kidney system. Um, I explain to people quite a bit, one, if you take your intestines and build a wall in the middle of it, you can't transfer your, your material. The same with, uh, with this, if you take it, um, get rid of a third of your intestines, you're not going to be able to operate. You can't get rid of your waste, um, nor can you absorb your nutrients. It's, it's the same situation for the Savannah River. Um, I just basically in my PowerPoint is a bunch of examples of the, the exact same thing. So there's, um, this is near Cracker Neck, Savannah River site. If you guys are familiar on the South Carolina side, they have a little bomb plant over there. Uh, they have 45 miles of river, much of which has been disconnected um, through multiple different cutoff bends. The good news is the Savannah River site owns this land, which makes it much easier to begin to think about putting it back together. Um, one of the things I should mention is, uh, one, Savannah River Keeper is a non-federal sponsor with uh, the Corps of Engineers on the reintroduction of these oxbows. We're working through the feasibility study right now. Um, we sued the Corps of Engineers and George Bush Authority over the harbor deepening mitigation. Um, in that settlement is $13.5 million to be putting the river back together. Um, the industries are all on board because I think, uh, if you guys know anything about how the harbor deepening worked, um, essentially the industries upstream were told you guys have to significantly reduce what you're putting into the river because of the dissolved oxygen in the harbor. Now, I'm not saying they weren't responsible, but at the end of the day, it was really done so that they could deepen the harbor. So my Augusta Industries and other industries really have a vested interest in trying to protect themselves by adding some of this, this river back together. A um, couple of uh, questions I said, how did, how did we get here? Um, Starting in the 1700s, there's evidence of these cutoff bends. In fact, if anybody is interested in old maps on the Savannah River, I have uh, one of my staff members who's obsessed. I think we have about seven or eight gigs worth of old maps of the Savannah River. So please contact us and he'll love it. Um, but the 30s to the 70s is when the Corps of Engineers really dug into this project. Um, I, I try to explain to people that uh, the New Deal, it was, it was a good thing for our economy. It was good to keep people back to work. But I do believe that as a society, we have to come to the realization that it might be some of the most devastating time for our waterways. The fact is, this is when we built dams. This is when we straightened rivers without really thinking about the implications of that. Um, this year alone, the Corps of Engineers has $6 billion in its budget to take away dams. So there is beginning to be a recognition and a tie to, to look at this restoration, but 
we really have to be uh, pretty conscious and I think open about the fact that a lot of our issues right now are not going to get any better unless we look at restoration meaningfully. Um, like I said, the, the idea, so this has been studied back and forth by the, the core um, over the years. The idea resurfaced in 2006, leading back up to the uh, settlement agreement with the harbor. Um, and now, 2000, it says 2017, because we started once and then we stopped, now we've restarted. Um, so the non federal sponsor component of our project is actually funded by the water utilities. So I have a $1.5 million match. City of Augusta, City of Savannah, and Columbia County are funding that because they view this as one of the best ways to improve the water quality, to continue to protect it so that they can continue to use it. So um, it's really important that we think about all the different benefits. Um, very quickly, why should people care? I mean, it's pretty obvious. If you gut the river 78 miles, you're going to hurt it significantly. We've lost our swamps. Um, the assimilative capacity is huge. Dissolved oxygen is where the rubber meets the road for the Savannah River. Um, and if the river, if we can slow it down, we've sped it up by over a day um, in its capacity. Um, absorbing and buffering, protecting drinking water sources. Um, there has been an overwhelming move over the last little bit to do uh, water, water source protection through land conservation, and that's good. I'm all for it, but I'm sorry, land conservation does not improve water quality. It doesn't. It can keep it at the same level, but you cannot improve water quality just through land conservation. You have to look at restoration. Uh, same thing, so uh, opportunity to develop equally um, intuitive solutions to existing problems. Um, and this is, as far as I can tell, the largest conceived restoration in U.S. history on a river system. So um, this is a massive undertaking. We'll see um, how well it, or how much it gets carried down over the next little bit. Um, again, there, there's just some other examples. So this is Screven County near uh, Highway 301 near Briars Creek. If you're familiar with that area, there's, there's a, a very large concentration of, uh, of cuts in that area. Um, a side note that's kind of interesting about all of these cuts is they tend to be loaded with Indian artifacts. So people may not realize this, but the Savannah River, that area is one of the highest population of Indian artifacts in the United States. Allendale, South Carolina is the oldest human being, according to Dr. Goodyear, in the United States. There are some really important archaeological work being done. Unfortunately, we don't have any tribes left. We don't have any tribes left in South Carolina or Georgia that are actually functioning on the Savannah River. So one of the things that we're going to have to work through, and it's difficult, uh, is as we look at putting these bins back in, who do we consult with? Yeah, we can consult with, you know, the Georgia and South Carolina archaeological, you know, the DNR, but it would be nice to actually have, have some tribes. So there's just a shout out to the fact that we don't have any left and we used to have a whole bunch. Um, so the expected timeline, so this is, this is Allendale County um, near, near uh, Cohen Bluff area. Again, I mean, you could just... It's just kind of crazy to think about. I just wanted you guys mainly just to be able to see the amount of damage if you think about it. That disconnects all these areas. Um, these are really good bar fishing spots because they have zero oxygen in them in the summer. Um, but that's about it. All right, so our expected um, sunny time. So we will hopefully be done by the end of 21, which will open up the $13.5 million, will become eligible once Inner Harbor dredging is complete. Um, if they can get those silly bubblers that are not going to work to work, um, they might stay on time too. So hopefully we'll have some money in 2021. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention, so this is their, their placemat. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but this is the... Chef has a really nice place map that they hand out. That's all their different restoration projects in uh, timeline. Um, so I think I had, I wanted, there's one other idea that I have here that I kind of wanted to, to bring forward. Um, in a restoration project, I'm not aware of anywhere else this has been done, but dissolved oxygen is our big issue. So it seems to me that when we restore these cuts, 
if we don't fill this in all the way. But let's just go three quarters of the way and line it with some riprap. Seems to me we'd have a shallow water habitat, we'd have a natural oxygenation zone, and maybe the fish would like to hang out on it. But one thing I can tell you, I feel pretty strongly that silly bubblers aren't going to work. And when they don't, we have to have adaptive management. We have to have something to come up with a solution. So I'm hoping it will time quite nicely so that we can begin to focus on are there ways that we can naturally add rock? Are there ways we can naturally get the river to do this rather than spending $8 million a year in state and federal funds to keep bubblers on the river? Um, the, the couple of things that, that I am hoping from today by telling you guys this is, this is ongoing is I need studies. If you guys know of studies that have been done either on the Savannah River looking at the cutoff bends or different cutoff bends projects throughout the United States, we're very lucky. Uh, the new Bill Bailey at the Corps of Engineers is Steve Fisher, who has a long history in restoration in other places, so that's exciting. I think the Corps is in a a better place for restoration here in the future, but um, one, if you have students or people that are interested in studying this, two, if you have now freaked out because the muscles are in these cutoff bends and you're really upset because now I'm going to hurt the muscle population, come see me about that too. Um, but I just, we need feedback. We need feedback on how things are going to move forward. I think it's very important to make sure that agencies, I think oftentimes, the Corps doesn't talk to NOAA, doesn't talk to Georgia DNR until you've reached a certain level in the stage of the process. And that's kind of what we've been trying to circumvent here for so many years, is having conversations to the side so that as we get to those milestones, we already know what everybody needs and we've kind of been working on it together. So um, I guess that, that's my big pitch. Thank you. For one question for Tanya, if there is one. Okay, we'll end it with uh, silly bubblers, oxygen, and <laughs> <for fish. laughs>